Hello all, hope you're well. Welcome to today, the 3rd of September and uh, Thursday. We're nearly at the end of the week again and we're just continuing with our journey uh, on the path of uh, uh, repentance, forgiveness, uh, uh, restoration and hope. And uh, yeah, while we, while we walk through this time, I feel it's important that we take it back to the one that can actually bring the healing through this process. So today we're going to focus a little bit on Jesus. Uh, as we're doing with the rest, but we're going to take a couple of scriptures that will help us in our journey. So let's open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. We know that we are doing all things for you. And Lord, we know that we can't do it without you. But Lord, we just ask that you continue walking with us and allow us through today's reading to help us identify ways that we may be able to walk with you. Give us the strength, your strength, to be able to hear what you have to say and let it be something that we can hold fast to during these times that you are working in and through us, delivering us from all that may have uh, caused us heartache in the past to allow us to walk with you in a, in a more free way. So let's enjoy our time with you today and give you all the praise and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Okay, so um, yeah, I know we've been traveling a path on this uh, process of, of uh, repentance and, uh, and, and forgiveness and restoration and it's been quite a challenge because I've been wanting to share something that um, may be able to help you in the in the process and help myself included. <clears throat> but before we carry on with what he says about the healing process, let's just take time to see what Jesus did. And we're taking it from Luke. And uh, it's a it's a lovely book that talks about the great redeemer but let's see what happened when he was that young boy getting prepared knowing that the, that he was um consecrating himself for for his ministry to come even at the very very tender age well even before he was born um because he as gabriel said would would be the holy spirit that would be born through mary but let's read a bit. So let's take it from verse 40 of chapter 2. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God uh, was upon him. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem <clears throat> according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days and they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it, but supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, seeking him. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why do you seek me? Do you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he had spoken to them. So this is a, a great little passage about the Lord coming into your life, working in and through you, getting you closer to the Word and the Scriptures and prayer to have a good plan for you, which is one of which is, is, is part of the process, which is baptism and making disciples. But let's have a look at something that's quite important. And a kingdom dynamic that we're going to look at today is consecration, which is Christ-likeness. And I know that we've discussed Christ-likeness before, but let's have a look at what one of the topics, which would be consecration. And this verse reveals that even as a child, Jesus recognized that his life was consecrated, set apart for the Father's purpose. 
Later as an adult, he would declare, I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. John 5, 20, uh, 30. A statement that breathes with our call to Christ-like consecration as we hear his commission. As our Father has sent me, I also send you. Yielding to this call and the pragmatics of daily living means that we recognize his purpose for us during times. We would otherwise seek indulgences of our self-interests or run from the demanding implications of his leading at a given moment. Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Christ-like consecration acknowledges that it is not ours to uh, excuse ourselves from the place of service, but to choose his choice. That is to say, his choice is my choice. My consecration to him. So thereafter it spoke about Jesus advancing in wisdom and favor. And including John the Baptist preparing the way. You know, if we quickly, which was something else that I had on my heart to maybe share with you, which I think we have a couple of minutes to do so. We spoke yesterday about uh, John the Baptist and also uh, decreasing so that he can increase. But it talks about John the Baptist making a way in the, in the wilderness. And it said, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness in Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is who has spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So it goes on to say that uh, when we go into the presence of the Lord, as it uh, further said, when Jesus uh, was, was baptized, it said that uh, there was a dove that landed on his shoulder and Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit because he said, I come to baptize you with water, but there's one that's coming that will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. So just as much as John's baptism gives the individual the medium of water, the baptism of Jesus replaces the Christian in the well, not replaces, places the Christian in the spirit. And that's a very significant and profound thing. But before we do that, we just need to prepare our hearts. Or even if we have been baptized, we go through the process of rendering our hearts to him and making him the, the Lord of our lives. So what, what's, the, what's the message that I'm, I'm sharing with you here? Is, is While we go through this process during the month of Elul and... Uh, going through the process of repentance, forgiveness, uh, hope, and restoration. The one key ingredient for us to be able to walk in the light is to be able to see what Jesus did and said. And from a young age, as we've just read, it was from a very young and tender age of 12 that he even decided to continue uh, doing his father's business, even though his parents had uh, wandered off. So let's consecrate ourselves. Let's find a place in our heart and our time. We always can make time to get into his word and get closer to him so that we can hear his voice through his words and his actions and his deeds. So Heavenly Father, thank you for today. I know that this is just a short time that we have with you as we continue. But Lord, let it, let it increase. Let our time with you increase and let your Holy Spirit do the work in each and every one of us, Lord. As I prayed yesterday, I pray that we will be able to hear what you have to say and let, it, let us be convicted about what you are saying in our lives. Lord, we look to you, as it says in Matthew 6.33. So, Father God, we just give you praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus, and you get all the glory. Amen. Okay, guys, sending you lots of love, and uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care.